Welcome back to the channel folks. John Woo is a renowned director celebrated for his influential work in both Hong Kong and Hollywood cinema. His distinct style characterized by high octane gunplay, slow motion sequences, and intense emotional drama has left a lasting impact on the world of filmmaking. I have a hard time picking out which of his movies is my favorite. Honestly, it might be Hard Target. You know, the movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme where he's sporting a sweet mullet and punches a snake. But often credited as his most iconic and influential film is 1992's Hard Boiled. Serving as his last Hong Kong movie before he transitioned to Hollywood, the film stars Chow Young-Fat as Inspector Tequila Yuen. Tequila is a clarinet-playing, alcoholic cowboy cop who doesn't play by the rules. During the opening of the movie, he and his fellow officer Benny are surveilling gun smugglers making a deal in a crowded tea house. After the deal goes south, the restaurant is engulfed in a massive shootout, leading to the deaths of several civilians, criminals, and Benny. Tequila manages to subdue the lead gun smuggler, but lets his anger get the best of him and he executes the guy instead of arresting him. Which gets him an earful from his superior officer, as he could have used that guy as a key witness in their case. The rest of the movie follows Tequila investigating a triad leader who may have been involved, while also working with an undercover police officer who is unsure of his own loyalties. I'm not going to summarize the whole movie and encourage anyone who's never seen Hard Boiled to check it out on their own. Hard Boiled would set new standards for the action genre, introducing the idea of mixing martial arts with gunplay, aka gun fu, making use of slow motion to enhance visual spectacle, and pioneering long continuous takes during action scenes, with the movie's infamous hospital shootout showcasing John Woo's mastery of his craft. And in 2007, Wu would revisit the movie by making a sequel, this time in the form of a video game called Stranglehold. Developed by Midway Games before they went bankrupt, Stranglehold is a third-person shooter that puts you in the shoes of Inspector Tequila, with Chow Young-Fat returning to his iconic role by providing his voice and likeness. Featuring bullet time shooting similar to Max Payne, which was inspired by John Wu's films in the first place, Stranglehold has Tequila travel from the slums of Hong Kong to the streets of Chicago in order to rescue his loved ones and stop the various factions fighting for control of Hong Kong. Does the game live up to the quality of the movies? Does its gameplay help it stand out from its contemporaries in the genre? Like the aforementioned Max Payne or Total Overdose? Let's hop in and find out! But first, today's video is brought to you by War Thunder. War Thunder is an immersive vehicle combat game with over 2,500 incredibly detailed tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from over 10 nations spanning nearly a century of warfare, all the way from the 1920s to the present day, all modeled accurately with realistic graphics and sound effects. Join the battlefield and experience the jaw-dropping power of your arsenal through incredible damage x-ray views. War Thunder caters to every type of gamer, to those seeking the heart-pounding, fast-paced action of arcade mode, or the realistic and challenging experience of simulator mode. Use my link in the description down below to sign up for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, and join the ranks of over 70 million players playing War Thunder across the globe. New and returning players who haven't logged in for 6 months can claim an exclusive bonus pack across all platforms, including premium vehicles, the Eagle of Valor Vehicle Decorator, 100,000 Silver Lions, and 7 days of premium account access. But act fast, this offer won't last forever. Thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. Befitting his status as a cowboy cop, Tequila tends to shoot first and ask questions later with the help of his trusty Berettas. He does get more offensive options as he runs through levels, being able to pick up shotguns, assault rifles, machine guns, and more off of enemies he kills, though he is limited to only carrying two firearms at any given time. Befitting his action hero roots, Tequila never has to stop and reload his guns either. Instead, they'll refill with ammo anytime he walks over an enemy carrying a similar gun type but it's a little wonky in its implementation, as the ammo for your guns only seems to refresh if it's under a certain threshold. I'm not sure if there's an exact number or if it varies by gun type, but usually I couldn't instantly pick up fresh ammo unless that particular gun had half or less of its bullets remaining. Either way, it wasn't too detrimental, as the overabundance of guns and enemies meant I didn't have to wait long before I could refresh my ammo. 
As Tequila guns down enemies, an orange meter underneath his health will fill up and allow him to activate Tequila Time. Just like the Bullet Time ability in Max Payne, it'll slow down the action and allow Tequila to pull off easier kills. However, it's a lot more stylish here in Stranglehold, as on top of activating the slow motion as you're diving while shooting, it'll also kick in when sliding over tables, running down railings, jumping from ceiling fixtures, or surfing on top of handcarts. Stranglehold's gameplay is more arcade-like in nature with a focus on ranking up combos, making it less like Max Payne and more like Total Overdose. Chaining multiple kills and taking out enemies during tequila time will reward you with silver stars that help improve your final score at the end of a level. More importantly, stars will increase your tequila bomb gauge. Represented by a green circular meter at the bottom left of the screen, filling your tequila bomb gauge will allow you to use unique abilities. And in a reference to Hard Boiled, the collectible paper cranes scattered around will fill up the gauge a decent amount too depending on the color of the crane you find. The first level of the gauge is a simple health boost, which will let you heal up tequila a little bit when you're in a pinch, though not as much as the health kits you can find scattered around in a level. Your second ability is Precision Aim, which lets you zoom in on distant targets and hit a specific body part on an enemy, which usually one-shots them and treats you to a unique depth animation depending on where you hit them, and that includes shooting them in the nuts. Tequila's third ability is Barrage, which buffs your currently equipped gun's firepower and gives you infinite ammo while it's active. And finally, his last ability is the Spin Attack. Tequila will open fire wildly around him as doves dramatically fly away from him in slow motion, his rain of bullets killing every enemy around him. While he has a limited pool of abilities, I think they get the job done. Each one has its benefits and doesn't feel too overpowered, as you have to fill up the Tequila Bomb Gauge a decent amount to use the stronger abilities, and they don't trivialize the few boss encounters you get either, as the boss will just take some partial damage as opposed to just getting one-shotted. You're not limited to just shooting your enemies though, as creatively, and probably my favorite thing about Stranglehold, is that you can take advantage of your environment to take out enemies. First, you got the usual exploding barrels and gas canisters that you can shoot to blow up criminals. While not as flashy, there are objects scattered around a level that you can shoot to knock down, and instantly take out any enemies unlucky enough to be standing near or underneath them. This includes neon signs, AC units, flimsy scaffolding, hanging lights, boulders, and more. Pulling off these environmental kills will take out enemies faster, reward you with more stars, and fill up your tequila bomb gauge quicker. Destroying objects in the environment can also create paths that let you proceed through a level, or to reach an out-of-the-way area to grab a collectible paper crane, more ammo, or a different weapon. I really dig how the game lets you use the environment to your advantage like this, and wish more games gave you an option like that. Despite your near-infinite ammo and destructive abilities, the game can still be rather challenging, especially in later levels, as the sheer number of enemies and where they're placed can become overwhelming and get you killed fast if you're out in the open. So it's best to find cover behind a wall or pillar or crouching behind a crate, though not all cover is created equal and some can be shot to pieces by enemies. Finally, outside of the standard running and gunning, Inspector Tequila will occasionally be thrown into a standoff. With several enemies surrounding him, things go into slow motion as the Inspector will need to dodge incoming shots and kill an enemy before turning to the next one. While I think they're pretty cool and stylish, these sequences always feel a little awkward, mainly because Tequila's shooting reticle doesn't start at the middle of the screen, and instead in the bottom corner. So it throws me off and takes me a few seconds longer than it should to line up a shot on an enemy. Overall, I'd say the gameplay is solid, and perfectly captures the destructive action of Hard Boiled. And while a bit simple, I think the story serves as a decent sequel to the movie. Stranglehold's plot is kicked off when a group of armed men break into an apartment to capture a woman and her daughter. That same group would then reach out to the Hong Kong Police Department and inform the cops they've kidnapped one of their officers. Threatening his safety if they don't agree to their terms, they want a singular police officer to meet them in the Kowloon Marketplace to speak face to face. The chief of police suspects the whole thing is a trap and instead wants to send an entire squad of officers to go in. Inspector Tequila believes that could lead to the death of the missing cop and in his usual reckless way, volunteers to go to Kowloon to discover the man's whereabouts. Don't send anywhere, Captain. They just get in my way. Tequila, don't. It's a setup. I hope so. I hate to think they were wasting our time. Tequila, get back here! After the obvious trap is sprung and Tequila guns down dozens of Triad members, he'll learn that the missing policeman is already dead. Looking around for information on which gang killed him, Tequila will enter the local tea house and order his usual drink, a Tequila Slammer. That's how he got his name, by the way. He just loves guzzling down tequila slammers. In the movie, he can't help himself from having a drink while in the middle of a meeting at police HQ. 
Don't think I've ever met anyone who loves tequila slammers that much, or in general. Like, it's a fine drink, but I'm more of a Moscow Mule kind of guy. This scene in the tea house serves as an homage to the opening scene of Hard Boiled, with shit going crazy after Tequila interrupts a deal with the Imperial Nine, a gang working for the Dragonclaw Triad, who were there to buy forged passports from another group, the Golden Cane. After killing all the gangsters in the tea house, the inspector heads to the fishing island of Tai O to continue his investigation. Speaking to a local fisherman, Tequila discovers that the Golden Cane are trying to move in on the Dragonclaw's turf, and hijack their latest boat shipment. After more shooting, explosions, and a turret section, the inspector boards a yacht and makes contact with a fellow officer, Jerry. Jerry has been undercover for some time in the Dragonclaw, investigating their operations and trying to get close to their leader. Maintaining his cover, Jerry brings Tequila with him to have a sit down with Jimmy Wong, the leader of the Dragonclaw. Wong explains that the Golden Cane are responsible for killing the missing police officer, and that they staged it to look like the Imperial Nine were behind it. Tequila questions why the older and more powerful Dragonclaw triad hasn't wiped him out yet for moving on his turf. The old man's hands are tied, as the Golden Cane are working with a Russian crew based out of Chicago, led by Damon and Vladimir Zakharov. Normally, this alliance wouldn't be enough to intimidate the Dragonclaw, but they've also kidnapped his daughter Billy and granddaughter Tico. As explained in flashbacks set 18 years before the start of the game, Billy was the love of Tequila's life. Due to being a cop and Billy the daughter of Jimmy Wong, they had to keep their relationship a secret. The couple planned to run away from Hong Kong together after Billy became pregnant, but she failed to show up on the day they agreed to elope. Instead, Tequila was greeted by Jimmy Wong and his goons, who, having discovered their plan, the old man sent his daughter away and forbade her from contacting Tequila ever again. And to rub salt on the wound, Wong has his goons give the heartbroken guy a serious beatdown. With close to two decades of no contact, Tequila becomes emotional when seeing Billy in the ransom video sent by the Russians, more so when learning his daughter's name and seeing her for the first time. Wong exploits his emotional connection to get Tequila to help him save the girls, claiming the feds would be alerted if he sent any of his crew. And he needs someone clean like Tequila to do the job. Reluctantly, the inspector agrees and his investigation leads him to a restaurant owned by the Golden Cane. As Tequila goes guns blazing, killing every triad in sight, the leader of the Golden Cane, Young Gi, is in the middle of a Skype call with the Zakharovs discussing their next move. Their meeting comes to an abrupt end once Young Gi learns Tequila is on his way, the triad leader fleeing to Chicago to meet the Russians and leaving his number two lock to deal with the inspector. Lock is dead. The Mega is gone. And you're asking me to be cool? Do me a favor. Kill yourself! I heard you're getting short on Hong Kong staff tonight. Just downsizing. I like a lean operation. If the cocky triad Young Gi sounds familiar, that's because he's voiced by Russell Wong, who previously voiced cowboy cop Nick Kang in True Crime's Streets of LA. Just like he did in that game, Russell Wong really chews up the scenery every time he speaks, and easily gives the best performance in the game. And I didn't know this at first, but the older Zakharov brother Damon is voiced by Arnold Vosloo. You know, Imhotep in the first two Brendan Fraser mummy movies. Tequila manages to follow Young Gi to Chicago, and goes on the warpath through Zakharov's penthouse, confronting the younger Zakharov brother Vladimir in a boss battle towards the end of the level. And this encounter is stupidly frustrating. This guy's a tank, barely taking any damage from your guns or abilities. His boss fight is mostly a scripted encounter that needs you to chase him around his penthouse suite, doing a bit of damage to him while also killing the flunkies he summons. That in of itself wouldn't be too bad, but the entire place is booby trapped with one hit kill laser trip mines, and he'll turn on more lasers to block your path while chasing them. Not only is it stupidly easy to kill yourself if you're not careful when running around, the path to go after him isn't very obvious either. So you might end up wasting time taking the wrong path to him, or soft locking the encounter by reaching a spot you weren't supposed to yet, trapping yourself with nowhere to go unless you restart the encounter. And after the bullshit with the lasers, it moves on to the second phase where you have to fight Vlad while he's shooting from a helicopter. Like most of these boss fights aren't anything special honestly, but this one was so annoying in its design that I had to bring it up. After the penthouse, Tequila tracks Demon, Zakharov, and Young Gi to the Chicago Museum. After destroying who knows how many priceless artifacts and killing Damon, Tequila will be reunited with Billy. Too bad it's a short reunion. I... I don't know what to say. You missed your plane. I had to leave you. To keep you and Tico safe. You should have trusted me. I loved you. 
Wasn't that enough? How did you find me? Your father sent me. Funny, huh? My father? No. The king took Tiko back to Hong Kong. Find her. Save her. Please. I promise. Forgive me. Forever. Chasing after Jerry, an angry and heartbroken tequila demands to know who paid him off to kill Billy. Turns out it was Jimmy Wong as on top of Zakharov kidnapping the girls, he also got his hands on the names of known Dragon Claw associates. If Wong didn't cave to the Russians' demands, he would have Billy expose those names in court in exchange for sparing Tico, which would land Wong in jail. Not willing to risk his entire organization, the old man decided to get rid of that loose end and callously ordered the execution of his own daughter. Oh, and Jerry switched sides while undercover, serving as Wong's mole in the Hong Kong PD. And since he's responsible for killing the love of his life, Tequila has no issues killing his former friend. Realizing Tico is next on Wong's hit list, he races back to Hong Kong to save his daughter. Showing a bit of restraint, when he arrives at Golden Cane HQ, Tequila sits down with Young Gi to hash out a deal to get his daughter back. He's not interested in playing ball, as Tico is too valuable an asset to use against Wong, and he's already arranged a deal to hand her over in exchange for a large piece of the Dragon Claw territory. Tequila laughs at Young Gi for being so naive, and thinking Wong would agree, pointing out that the old man isn't as honorable as he seems, considering he ordered the death of his own flesh and blood. Tequila backs up his argument by showing him some texts that prove that Jimmy Wong was going to betray Young Gi when he showed up to deliver Tico. The two sides then decide to form an alliance to take down Jimmy Wong. Tequila planning to ambush the deal and catch the old man off guard since he doesn't know the inspector is still alive. Unfortunately, the plan falls apart immediately, with Wong getting his hands on Tico while Young Gi gets lit up and killed. Damn, I was hoping we'd get into a boss battle with him before he bit it. Out of options, Tequila takes the fight to Jimmy Wong and storms his estate. Anticipating this, the old man throws everything he's got at the police detective, including an army of Dragon Claw soldiers wielding the best weapons in the game, which includes rocket launchers and sniper rifles, then a broadsword helicopter raining hell from above, even more soldiers inside the main building, and finally, a dual boss fight against Wong and his right-hand man, Depang. Just as it looks like Wong is about to take out Tequila, Tico saves her father's life by pushing her grandfather over a balcony, causing him to fall to his death. The game comes to an end with Tequila meeting and holding his daughter for the first time and walking off into the sunset. It's okay. It's over now. I've heard a lot about you. Good or bad? She never stopped loving you. So, good things. All good things. Oh my god. The paperwork is going to take a year. Here. I'm tired of carrying this thing around for you. That was Stranglehold. My time with the game came in just a little over 6 hours, which is why this video is much shorter than usual. That and its thin action movie plot didn't really give me much to discuss outside of a simple plot summary, but I don't really mind. It's a simple experience that doesn't outstay its welcome and can be comfortably beaten in an afternoon. Though it doesn't have much replay value outside of trying to get a high score on each level and using the currency you earn to unlock concept art and trailers, Stranglehold did have a multiplayer component but the servers on PC have been offline for years, so I couldn't tell you if it was any good. I don't have any real issues with the game, but if I had one critique to level at it, and honestly, it's more of a nitpick, it's that it doesn't really do much to acknowledge the events of Hard Boiled. Considering the movie's cult status and the fact Stranglehold released 15 years after the movie, John Woo and the developers probably didn't want to alienate players who never saw the movie, but Inspector Tequila is the only thing that really ties the movie and the game to each other. Granted, I'm not sure there were any other characters they could bring back for Stranglehold, as most either died before the movie's end or were fairly minor. 
The only one who could have some impact would be the secondary lead, Alan. But seeing how his story ended, it'd probably feel cheap to have him show up. I don't know, maybe having the villains of this game tied to the villains of the movie in some way could have worked. But like I said, it's just a nitpick, it doesn't really detract from the experience. Overall, I had a good time with Stranglehold. If it wasn't for Midway Games going under, maybe it could have gotten a sequel that expanded the scope of the game. Add more weapons, abilities, maybe some driving sections, whatever. Having played True Crime Streets of LA, Sleeping Dogs, and now this, it does put me in the mood to check out another martial arts style game, like Jet Li's Rise to Honor, but that's a topic for another day. And that's the video. Thanks again to today's sponsor, War Thunder. Sign up today to play for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. Using the link in the description, new and returning players who haven't logged in for six months can claim multiple in-game bonuses. Thanks for watching. And a big thanks to my $5 members and patrons, whose names are up on the screen right now. And a big thanks to my $10 members and patrons, including Alfred Correa, Miles Garrett, Primary, and Skill Fuse. If you're interested in becoming a channel member or a patron on my Patreon, you can support me for as low as $3 a month, which will give you early access to future videos and to uncut versions of those videos too. As more people join, I plan to do members-only polls as well to vote on what games to cover, and eventually exclusive videos too. I'm trying to cut down on my reliance on YouTube ad revenue and sponsorships, so any help you can provide is greatly appreciated. And another big thanks to everyone who showed up to my first live stream. It was nice to just chill and catch up with everyone while I was playing GTA 4. I'm hoping to stream more often, maybe like twice a month or more if I can find the time and stick to a schedule. The VOD for the first stream should be live on the channel again. I didn't realize I had it turned on in settings to automatically go unlisted once the live stream was done. Though there might be a tiny handful of you who can't see it either way. Since I didn't bother to turn off the in-game radio, and the stream got hit with like 10 copyright claims for music, which while I didn't monetize it in the first place, does block the VOD in certain countries unfortunately. In the future I'll probably be more careful about copyrighted music, or just change up what I play on stream. If there's any games I've already covered you'd like to see me play, let me know. Again, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and comment down below. Have you ever played Stranglehold? Did you ever watch Hard Boiled? Which John Woo movie is your favorite? Post your thoughts down below. I'm hoping to reach 100k subs by the end of the year, so if you're new to the channel, I'd love your support and if you subscribed. Check out the recommended video here at the end, or the playlist of my GTA videos. I'm Fuzzy Slippers, and I'll see you later. Peace.